off their man to man, run the man to man offense. But if they're in the zone, you pop out with these guys square. Let's do it from the defensive end. Then we'll get our break in here. Hey, hey, you look beautiful. Here we go, Here we go. North Carolina fans in the capacity crowd of more than 16,000 here in the Omni quickly learned why the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, led the nation in scoring with 107 points per game. To nobody's surprise, the Rebels came out running and shooting against the Tar Heels. North Carolina All-America Phil Ford was cold in the beginning, and his shooting was off the mark. Vegas capitalized and scored on beautiful plays like this. Number 25, Glenn Gondrasek drives, crosses over, scores on a left-handed layup. The Rebels also displayed quickness on the boards. But North Carolina wasn't about to be intimidated. This driving layup by Mike O'Corin made it 25-all with more than nine minutes left in the first half. However, moments later, number 42 for Vegas took command. Larry Moffitt was everywhere and did everything. He scored four straight baskets. Some of them were just unbelievable. And some were spectacular like this slam dunk. That gave Vegas a 37-29 lead. As the first half came to a close, Michael Corrin scored a pair of baskets for North Carolina. And at halftime, it was a 49-43 ball game with the Rebels halfway home. Yet to be reckoned with, however, was All-America Phil Ford, who put on a dazzling performance in the second half for North Carolina. And then Vegas experienced some bad luck. Larry Moffitt had to leave the game when he was accidentally popped on the nose by teammate Glenn Gondrasek, right here. North Carolina immediately took advantage of his absence. On the next play, Houston passing to O'Corran, who scores in a driving layup. He was fouled in the process, and his free throw ties the game at 55 all. Ford apparently was not bothered by his injured right elbow because he put Carolina ahead by four with more than 15 minutes to play. And then Sam Smith of Vegas cut the lead back to two. For the next 11 minutes, North Carolina controlled the game, led by Phil Ford and Michael Corrin. Ford's exceptional passing to O'Corn produced four Tar Heel baskets. Certainly Ford's brilliant play came as no surprise. He had helped the United States win a gold medal in the 1976 Montreal Olympics. On the other hand, O'Corn was just a freshman, and as you can see, a very talented one. And so as the clock ticked away, the pressure was on Las Vegas. This Tony Smith shot narrowed North Carolina's lead to 79 to 77. The Rebels were flying again, and they were playing aggressively on defense, sometimes too aggressively, committing fouls in order to get the ball. Here they foul North Carolina guard John Kuster. Only 59 seconds to go in the game as Kuster goes to the free throw line. He had played exceptionally well in the regionals, and he made this one and one, putting North Carolina ahead by four. But Tony Smith came right back, hitting a jump shot from the circle. Then it was back to the free throw line with John Kuster in all. Kuster made five of six free throws in the last 59 seconds, all coming on pressure, one and one situations. The Rebels' Sam Smith scored the final basket at the buzzer, but it wasn't enough, and the Rebels fell one point short. North Carolina wins the game 84 to 83, led by Michael Corrin's 31 points. Only a few days later, the scoreboard for the final game. Marquette against North Carolina. And a capacity crowd jam the up. The focus of attention centered on this man, 48-year-old Al McGuire. Win or lose, this game would be Al McGuire's last hurrah. The colorful Marquette coach was saying goodbye to college basketball, a sport that he had coached for 20 years, and his close friend and rival coach, Dean Smith, wished him luck. For the dynamite season, okay? Stay alive on the bench, play to the best of your ability. That's all anybody can ask them.
Marquette gave North Carolina something to worry about right from the start when number 31, Bo Ellis, came outside, scored the Warriors' first basket from 20 feet away. Marquette's next six points were scored by number 15, Butch Lee. And he scored on moves like this. Moves that he probably picked up while playing basketball in the schoolyards of New York City. In the first half, North Carolina couldn't solve Marquette's shifting zone defenses. The Tar Heels had trouble working the ball inside. Consequently, they were forced to shoot from the perimeter. And oftentimes, they got only one shot. One time, Phil Ford did get inside, and he didn't miss. As expected, Marquette was patient on offense, taking their time, setting up their plays, and along the way, Bo Ellis controlled the backboards for the Warriors. Unfortunately for North Carolina, no one could control Butch Lee. Just watch this play. He goes from one end of the court to the other. A great solo move. In the first half, he got 15 points. The great Marquette defense held Phil Ford to six points. And the Warriors went to the dressing room with a 12-point halftime lead, causing Al McGuire to use superlatives in describing his team's first half play. We probably played the um, best 20 minutes of basketball in my 25, 30 years of being in basketball, especially defensively. We were, we were on top of it. We were dynamite on the defensive end. And offensively, for us to have 37 points is an awful lot of points uh, for Marquette University. And um, when in the halftime, and what I always say to the guys, I said, hey, there's 20 minutes to go. Now, we cannot relive these 20 minutes. So let's give the so-called maximum effort and have no excuse when we come back in. Yeah. 